Hey folks, welcome back to the Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark. And I'm Anne. Today we're taking a look at Darwin's Choice. Darwin's Choice is a game for two to six players ages 10 and up. It lasts about an hour and a half to two hours and it's brought to you by Tree Ceratops Games. Cool. Well, let's go see how many fantastic creatures we can make. In Darwin's Choice, you're going to be creating creatures or animals that evolve over time and you will have to make them adaptable to their environments and their ever-changing environments which will force you to migrate your animals to different areas within the world. All right, so the goal of the game in Darwin's Choice is to be the player with the most victory points or Darwin points Indeed. at the end of the game. So it's going to play out over a series of rounds and each round, uh, which is known as an era, era in the game, has three different phases. So the first one is the action phase. Mm -hmm. And in the action phase, you're gonna be building your animals, yeah. you might be mutating them Indeed. or migrating them. And this is really the meat of the game, right? Yeah. Making those fantastical <laughs> creatures, so. Absolutely. Uh, after that, you're gonna have to evaluate all of your creatures yeah. because they've gotta be able to survive Make the in cut. their location <laughs> and they've gotta have enough food to survive, yes. yeah. So, you know, of course, the more powerful ones will get the food first and hopefully and there's the enough the weak for ones you. might get eaten. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then after that, there's a third phase where you're going to be doing events such as an ice age or a flood. Or the Earth's rotation changes or volcanoes. Yeah, <laughs> or you might just have optimal conditions and yeah, nothing happens. which is pretty cool. If you're, if you're lucky. Yeah. Um, and then finally, the vegetation zones are going to be shifting as well, which might cause those animals to need to migrate to another location. So you'll play this over a series of rounds, um, gaining points as you mm -hmm. go along, and whoever has the most points at the end will win. Yep. Setup is very straightforward for this game. You're going to take the various cards and lay them out in the middle of the table. And surrounding those cards, you're going to lay out vegetation zones. And based on the number of the players in the game, will determine how many zones you'll lay out. Every player is going to receive a reference card, which is very important to follow the steps. And they're going to get 10 animal cards. These cards are going to range from bodies and legs and heads and tails. And there's two different decks. There's a small deck and a large deck. And you can take any number from any deck that you want. But the thing to note is that the small deck is generally heads and tails and some feet. And some wings. And some wings. And then the, the bigger deck is main bodies and like double legs and things yeah. of that nature. So um, all the different parts that you're going to be receiving have different connecting points as well. Something mm -hmm. to take note of. And then you'll take the various tokens, the food tokens and the Darwin points and lay those around the table for easy access to all players. Also take the competition tokens, put them to the side, as well as each player receives a number of player markers. These markers are going to be used on your creatures that you create so you can determine when you've used actions for them. All right, so let's jump into actually creating animals. This is the fun bit, right? Yes. So of the cards in your hand, you are going to be putting together these animals in whatever way you see fit. Yeah. And so there's a couple of requirements though. Every animal has to have a head and a body. Right. All other parts are optional. Yep. Um, the other thing is that it has to connect at one of the access points, and this is mm. for any card on there. And so there's white dots that will indicate whether you can add a tail or not. Or wings. Um, or wings or not. Yeah. yeah. So you can add on any of those access points and that's it. The other thing is that the cards have to be in the correct orientation. Yeah. And so the you can't words put the have tail. to be displayed correctly right. at the top. <laughs> you can't put the tail as legs or something like that. Exactly. All right, so once you have your creature ready, you have to decide which vegetation zone you want to put it in. Right. And to do this, you're gonna look at its adaptability. And so there are six different types of adaptability. Mm -hmm. There's temperature, cold or hot. There's running, swimming, flying, and climbing. Yep. So you'll look at the vegetation zones out there and see which one you think might be best for your new creature. It has to be able to survive with the minimum requirements. So it could be one thing, mm -hmm. or it could be multiple things, or it could be kind of an either or type of situation. So you'll put your animal into that zone, and then you will place it higher or lower than the other animals out there based upon its adaptability, as well as its competitive strength. And yeah. that's what those little trophy icons on the card are for. Okay, so what does it mean to be higher up in your vegetation right. zone? So when you first put your animal out there, your animal is going to need to find food. Yeah. And the higher you up, the better your chance of finding food is. And so when you get to the evaluation phase, first off you have to see, do you meet the minimum adaptable requirements right. to survive? If you're in the ocean and you can't swim because you have no parts <sighs> in the car, it doesn't have to be everything, but 
one card with a swimming icon will let you will let survive. you stay yeah yeah so if you if you can't survive you're just automatically gonna die yeah absolutely because you <laughs> cannot adapt to the environment and you are toast that is it so then the next thing is food you have to be able to have food to survive yep so there are three types of animals there are herbivores carnivores and omnivores and the herbivores are going to eat first they're going to eat the plant leaves and each vegetation zone has an amount that it will provide um, after that the omnivores and the carnivores and the carnivores they're kind of cool if they're they out are. of food but there's an animal out there that's lower on the food chain than them then they can just eat that animal and that other animal dies. Yeah, and that's going to get the rest of their food that they might be lacking one meat yeah and that might get them give them the ability to hang out in that place when the food was sparse. Just go eat another animal. That's right. Now, there's a couple animals, though, that can avoid being eaten. Yes. If there's a shovel icon, that means the animal can hide under the ground and will not be eaten by the carnivore. And if there's a poison icon, again, the animal <laughs> is safe from being eaten. There's also some animals that when you place the head, no longer do they need to eat food. They just survive, which is pretty slick. I mean, those are the type of point um, attracting animals that you want for the rest of the game because they can just hang out wherever they live. I think I had a little half fox, half something else who could right. hide underground so he couldn't be eaten and he didn't need food. So he was just hanging out for the whole game. Yeah. Now, sometimes at the beginning of an era, you'll be, be stuck with a hand of 10 cards that really don't fit together or work well. Well, you can discard all but one card and get a brand new hand, but only at the beginning of an era. And also, if you're still stuck, then there's this trading component. Yeah. And there's a couple different ways to do this, right? Yeah. So one of the ways you can go, hey, hey, Anne, I'm going to give you two heads if you give me a body. And you I don't can, know. I want to keep that body. Right? So I think it's a pretty interesting... Um, mechanism that you can try to get your fellow players to try to trade with you. However, you can create a trade row as an alternate Absolutely. way to play um, where you're trading in one card for another. And it can be, uh, I need to trade this body and get ahead or whatever you're doing. So there's just a couple different ways to handle trading, which is really nice because not always can you get folks to trade with you. <laughs> yeah. So especially people being pretty greedy in the game, which is understandable because you're yeah. trying to get the best creature out there. Yeah, it's a great option because depending yeah. on who you're playing with at the table, you can pick which trading mechanic you want to use. All right, now we're going to take a look at the transition phase and some craziness happens here. So <laughs> A lot of craziness. Yes, indeed. First, we're going to take a look at event cards. And uh, just a couple examples are um, Meteor Strike and Flood. And some of the different effects here are so like when the meteor hits the planet, it's going to reduce your food and vegetation for that next round for every um, zone. So it's really bad if you've got a lot of creatures out there already in the middle of play and this meteor comes up. There's just not, not going to be enough food everyone. to go around, yeah. And then there's the flood, and only certain types of um, adaptability can survive in a flood. You've got the the fin and the bird and the sloth, and these are the only creatures with this adaptability can survive. Everybody else will die. Yeah, a few of my other favorites are the Ice Age, uh, which yes. means that the new random zones are going to be the polar deserts, and that all of the polar deserts are protected. I also love the epidemic as well. Oh, yes. And that's where all meat consuming species have zero strength for the next era. And that strength is really important because yeah, that's, that's how you get lots of those Darwin points. So, for the end game. Right? Yeah, so yeah. you'll look out there and the first, second, and third strongest animals are going to get three, two, and one Darwin points. So that could be that could be a big loss if you've got the, you know, the strong animals out there. So after the horrible events take place, although there is one event that's not so bad. There is one. But in general, the events are going to be very earth shattering. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, you're going to be changing out those um, vegetation zones. And based on the uh, number of players in the game, we'll determine which zones and where and how things get changed. And you'll be drawing a uh, number of cards to, just, to figure out where they're going to be placed. Yeah. So you'll pull these new vegetation zones, put them in place, and then you're going to be looking forward to finding out if your care if your creatures are still going to be adaptable to these new zones now if you pull an ocean and you're replacing another ocean that's fine you don't have to have a different complete zone when the new zones come out okay so what do you do if your creature cannot survive in this new vegetation it's not zone? so good it's a little tough but you have a yeah. couple options you can mutate or you can migrate and you have to pick one of the two you right. cannot do both 
And so when you mutate, basically you can, you can add, you can remove, or you can exchange one card. And once you've done that, you'll put your um, flip your player marker over to the check mark to say that I have mutated that animal, and that animal is done for this era. Yeah, that you can't do any more actions. Yes. Now you can do a double mutation oh, if that's you right. would like, yep. but you have to spend your creature's Darwin points yes, in order do. to do so. So <laughs> is it worth it? Maybe it would be enough to let you survive. Because remember, those are your points at the end of the game. Yes. So the other option that your animal has, if mutating is just not gonna cut it for you, <laughs> is to migrate to a completely different zone. And to do that, you just take your animal and you'll slide him over into the new zone and then put him however high or low in the order he yeah. falls in compared to and the others again, in that zone. And again, you need to check your adaptability before you move to any of the zones. Yes, yeah, so you gotta make sure you're gonna survive in yes. your new zone. <laughs> and if the food is available. Absolutely. Because it, it might be a full zone because maybe that's where everyone needs to go to survive. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so how do you put this together? How do you get points throughout this game? Tell us, Anne. There are lots of ways to get points. So the first thing that you get points for is just surviving. Yeah. If you make it through the adaptability check and the food check, you get one Darwin point. Uh, in addition to that, you're going to get points for being the most adaptable to your specific zone that you're in. So this will be two to three points. Mm -hmm. And then there's the competitive streak. Yes. And this is where you're giving out trophies. Yes. So you'll have gold, silver, and bronze. Mm -hmm. And you'll get three, two, or one uh, Darwin points based off of how strong you are. And these points just accumulate throughout the game, right? And as long they as you're do. surviving. So what happens if I've got 15 points on a creature <laughs> and it gets eaten? You get to keep one point. Oh, that's and you sad. Lose everything else. Oh, and I think you that happened to You want your creature Anna, right? to survive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Your, your creature surviving is is how you win this game. Indeed. You have to adapt. You have to migrate. Yep. This is Darwin's choice after all. Yeah. And then whoever has the most Darwin points wins, wins the, the game. game. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So the rules and artwork still might be in flux, so keep an eye on the campaign for any changes. Now, with that said, you know, the meat of this game is building the creatures and uh, that's just absolutely what I enjoyed the most. And it is a blast to not only create them, but to mutate them and change them through the game. Really a lot of fun. Yeah, and that was definitely my favorite part as well. It's kind of a little bit puzzly, and oh, a yeah. little bit thinky and... Mm -hmm. And then you get something really good and all of a sudden an event changes it or the vegetation changes right. and you're a perfect animal. You're like, what do I do with it now? Right. So yeah, definitely love that too. Yeah. All right, folks. So if this looks like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they would appreciate your support. And I think that's it from us. And until next time, we'll, we'll see, see you at, at the, the table. table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.